Astrobiology suggests that basic life exists everywhere in the universe. Our solar system has probably seen it multiple times. Proving the existence of human life, technologically advanced life forms is harder. Solar energy determines everything. Simple life on Earth likely originated underwater and without oxygen and light, which are easy to create. Humans have long imagined life on other worlds. Because of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope ever built, the question has finally been resolved. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope found the first evidence of carbon dioxide in an extrasolar planet's atmosphere. This study of a gas giant 700 light years away around a sun-like star provides crucial information on its composition and evolution. In light of this finding, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has vowed that in the near future, humanity would have a perspective on the cosmos that is completely unprecedented. After finding this, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson offered a new view of the universe. So, let's have a look at the most recent findings from the James Webb Space Telescope and discuss their significance and the possibilities for further exploration. James Webb has two infrared cameras. The first is an NERCAM, or Near Infrared Camera, which captures infrared light at shorter wavelengths. The second instrument, the MIRI-CAM, records longer infrared wavelengths. The camera used to take the photos affects their appearance. NASA has released many stunning photographs from this massive one-of-a-kind telescope. Stars generating magnificent blue and orange light, galaxies whirling and crawling around each other in a tangle of stars and dust clouds, and some of the universe's oldest light from 13 billion years ago. The acquired information appears to be secure at this time, but the future is never certain. NASA expects this telescope to see light from the universe's farthest reaches, which might be dangerous and exciting at the same time. NASA results have pleased academics and scholars worldwide. Using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, an international group of astronomers compiled a comprehensive catalog of the deepest, coldest ice ever recorded on a molecular cloud last month. The researchers found frozen carbonyl sulfide, ammonia, methane, methanol, and water, the most detailed census of ice components available to build future stars and planets before they are heated during starbirth. The dark molecular cloud Chameleon 1 can be seen in its central region in this view from the telescope's near-infrared camera, which is 630 light-years away. Infrared light from the youthful, outflowing protostar CED-110 IRS-4 illuminates the cold, wispy cloud material. Ice in the cloud absorbs starlight and can be seen by many background stars, appearing as orange spots behind the cloud. The Ice Age project was one of Webb's 13 early release science programs, and this research was done as part of that effort. These observations show Webb's observing capabilities and teach the astronomical community how to use its instruments. The Ice Age team plans to observe ice from creation through icy comets. JWST imaged a dusty disk around a neighboring red dwarf star a week before this finding. These infrared observations show the disk for the first time. They reveal the disk's makeup data as well. The astronomical unit is 32 light years, located in the southern constellation Microscopium. Since planets typically form in less than 10 million years, its age of 23 million years indicates that planet formation has ended. As of now, two planets orbiting this star have been spotted using different telescopes. Telescopes found two planets orbiting the star. Collisions between planetesimals, a more massive version of the dust in our solar system that creates zodiacal light, created the dusty debris disk. Webb's NERCAM examined the astronomical unit. NERCAM's coronagraph blocked the main star's intense light, allowing scientists to investigate the region near the star. Thanks to the NERCAM's photos, scientists were able to follow the disk down to within five astronomical units, 460 MPC, of the star, which is roughly the distance that Jupiter travels in our solar system. The observation program took pictures at 3.56 and 4.44 microns. The researchers found that the disk was bluer or brighter at shorter wavelengths, suggesting that it contains a great deal of dust that is more efficient in scattering these wavelengths. Astronomical unit Mike's radiation pressure, unlike that of more massive stars, is inadequate to dislodge fine dust from the disk as shown by prior study. While pinpointing the disk's location is important, the team's ultimate objective is to search for gas giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn as well as the ice giants that inhabit our own solar system. 
These worlds are hard to find near distant stars using transit or radial velocity methods. An international team of European astronomers using Webb found an asteroid about the size of Rome's Colosseum, 300 to 650 feet, 100 to 200 meters. During Mary calibration, the crew found an interloping asteroid by chance. The object is possibly Webb's smallest yet, measuring less than 0.6 miles, one kilometer in length, within the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. More observations are needed to further understand this entity. These Webb observations, published in Astronomy and Astrophysics, were calibration photos of 1998 main belt asteroid 10920-1998, BC-1. Technical difficulties such as the object's brightness and an offset telescope pointing rendered the observations ineffective, as judged by the calibration team. The observations had been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of various MERI filters. The calibration team found that MERI's filters failed, owing to technical concerns such as object brightness and offset telescope aiming. However, the scientists used asteroid 10920 data to build and test a new orbit constraint and size estimation method. MIRI, ground-based telescopes, and the ESA's GIA spacecraft validated the method for asteroid 10920. The MIRI data analysis revealed the smaller interloper, an extremely low inclination orbit and a position in the inner main belt at the time of the Webb observations corroborate the team's estimates that the object is between 100 and 200 meters in size. If confirmed, this asteroid, which the team believes is Webb's tiniest and one of the smallest in the main belt, would change our understanding of the solar system's formation and history. Small asteroids are predicted by current models, but they are hard to observe, hence they have been investigated less than the larger ones. Webb dedicated observations will allow astronomers to examine asteroids under one kilometer. This suggests Webb may accidentally discover new asteroids. Even short MIRI observations near the solar system's plane will always include a few asteroids, most of which will be unknown, the team believes. It's only natural to ask if the JWST, with all the new planets and exoplanets it's discovering every day, will come across any signs of life. Will the JWST uncover life on another planet or exoplanet? As far back as recorded history goes, people have wondered if they are alone in the universe. Over 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered since 20 years ago. NASA estimates that trillions of exoplanets exist. The first signs of life outside our solar system might be found on extraterrestrial plants. On its approach to Jupiter, Galileo pointed its instruments towards Earth and found plant evidence. Red foliage, the sensor found VRE biosignature in plant reflected red and infrared light. Earth, with its rainforest, should have a strong and easy to detect VRE signal. JWST will measure VRE of distant Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars they may matter. Exoplanet Atmosphere Life Signs The JWST may detect sunlight entering a planet's atmosphere from its star. Spectroscopy would detect the missing wavelengths. The JWST can identify the atmospheric fingerprint left by atoms and molecules absorb specific wavelengths. You can use this technique to find out what sort of atmosphere a planet has and if life can thrive in it. The approach can identify life and atmospheric composition. Earth-sized planets with similar atmospheres should have life. Proxima Centauri, our nearest red star dwarf 4.25 light years from the Sun, offers the best chance to see city lights outside the solar system. A planet must be 20 times closer to Proxima than Earth to support liquid water-based life because it is 600 times fainter than the Sun. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet in the habitable zone with a mass of 1.3 times that of Earth. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri in the Goldilocks zone where light intensely melts water. Proxima b may be an airless, dead planet because it orbits its red dwarf star at 4.6 million kilometers. 93 million kilometers separate Earth and Sun. Solar winds can destroy Proxima b's atmosphere due to its close orbit. There is sufficient sunlight to keep temperatures at an Earth-like level and water at a liquid state. Proxima b may be tidally locked to the star due to its proximity. Proxima Centauri has around one-eighth the mass of the Sun and burns far less brightly than one might expect for a planet only 5% of the Earth-Sun distance. Liquid water may easily persist as long as the planet had an atmosphere to retain heat. 
considering the total energy reaching Proxima b from the Sun is only 66% of what Earth receives. If Proxima b had an atmosphere to preserve heat, liquid water could persist. Proxima b's oddities surprised scientists. Artificial lights have puzzled renowned scientists. So, what are they exactly? Do these lights indicate intelligent life on Earth? These questions have baffled scientists for years. We think the universe is full of life. Many of these aliens should be technologically adept enough to communicate with humans or pick up their radio signals. We haven't seen or heard anything, and the sky appears lifeless. The James Webb Space Telescope gives us new astronomical observation technology. This telescope can picture exoplanets unlike most others that have just inferred their presence. Considering the JWST's recent findings, what are your thoughts on them? Do you think the JWST will find alien life on those exoplanets? And if so, how do you think it will look? Thank you for watching this video until the end. Keep looking up at the sky. Oh, hey, what is that? It's the subscribe button. While you're watching it right now, click on it and make sure you don't miss out on any James Webb Space Telescope updates. We have another interesting video ready for you. Click on the video on your screen and let us take you on to another space adventure. See you there.